uh, and uh, upcoming weekend uh, that is going to be a lot of fun and joy uh, we're going to have a bon bonus um, weekend as well with the uh, bonus things you know reading from the abraham hicks cards and also to do some releases and uplifting from the freedom release method so it's going to be a lot of fun uh, through this weekend so 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 good so uh we have only 12 pages again left in this book you know reading from the book the law of attraction by esther and jerry x so it's been a wonderful journey uh, be reading every pages of the in this book to you and to for myself to to read and to to feel and, and the words and the understanding and knowing us and for ourselves that we ourselves are understanding and knowing those words in our own way it's such a wonderful thing such a wonderful blessing to just like okay oh no i have a new perspective on that oh no i have a new ah uh, moments in that no oh now i'm having a new cognition around that and when you releasing up the energy behind any resistant what is that's what all of this energy is in. That's what all of it is, is in from the Abraham. It's to release the resistance and allow yourself to come to place for feeling your alignment through anything and everything that you want to be, do, and have. Because there is no resistance. It's, uh, we didn't come forth into this universe, into this world, with I'm resisting to be here and then do and have and resist all that I want to be, do, and have. And then just like follow the stream of resistance. That's that's why it is so, why is it so powerful to feel the words are coming through because it's not um, it's harmonizing energy it's harmonizing energy it's it's a feel good it's feel good words coming through there is a good feeling thoughts in every words of those things and it's a clarification around uh, anything and yeah and it's in uh, when we can read it from the perspective from our own alignment then we really can understand those words coming through you know when we are uh, you know because we can't be in a resistant place and find alignment you know we can't uh, be in, in a problem and find a solution we are always alignment first and then whatever what you do and have from that space it will always um, guide you uh, in the direction of feeling more and more and more from uh, that space of alignment and alignment always feels good pure when you are in the pure low source energy when you are in alignment with the pure low source energy energy you are you always feel good and when you follow the stream from what always feels good to you you will always be guided to more in the same feeling that you feel from the first place so it is so nice to me to have that understanding and knowing of it so in our own way for sure and we are all listening to different people because there is no right or wrong we all we all are finding our own way someone listening to abraham someone listening to other people someone listening to whatever but it's what feels best to you you know what is the what is that feels good to you when you when you can find when you feel that something that comes through you when you read something or when there's some something that you feel that is ease up all of this then you know it's something in you that's that's harmonized with that and you understand and feel that so it's all all so good so yes we release this resistance by focusing clearly in the direction that feels better and yeah we do and we all do when we are clearly uh focusing in the in the direction that feels better then we release the resistance and allowing us for for what we clearly focus in the direction that feels better will be more and more and more you see so there is nothing there is no unwanted and there is there is then there is no um, avoiding anything there is no to try to fix anything because it's everything is an inclusive based universe there is or able to focus to direct the focus to something that feels better because we can't avoid a resistance and, and try to hide it if you feel it it's about you allowing it to come through to uh, to release it and then to, to moving forward to something new to not repeat the same rip over and over again and letting let, letting it play it out but letting it happen it's the energy that letting everything comes through you you don't resist when there is an emotion that comes through you guide your way to okay this doesn't feel good you're honest and you know what piece of it better and you move on and you feel better and better and better and then it's it's all good because better you feel better it gets and, and then you get focus more in the direction of that you see 
so so nice and we are so free to choose and focus always and say embrace your freedom to live to deliberate focus in the direction your 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 desire and yeah and also that we are all there's nothing wrong or bad with us we can always start new and refresh in this moment and focus on the direction of what feels a little bit better and that ability or that uh opportunity will be forever as we are in human form or will always be available for each and every each and one of us so we are so free so choices it's always we can always choose as we are in human form we can always choose what we want what we think about and what and feel about we always choose the direction we lead our thoughts and we can always choose to quiet our mind and release the resistance and, and breathing and we can always choose we always have choices in our life because it's not about the outside what's going on it's about what's going on inside the emotion when we are guiding our emotion and feeling more and and, and being more aware of that what's going on inside of oneself the inside more focused and then letting ourselves to be more deliberate about it to create it in the direction that feels better then it will be more like that. We we'll say there is a law of attraction universe. There is no assertion pushing against standing it up to its own attraction. Yeah, it is. So that's why we are so uh, guided by our, our we have all our, our guidance system and we, and then letting us know if we are pushing or not and that we can guide our way to to the, uh, in a way that feels better so so happy beautiful day roland so let's read this is going to be fun must i regularly 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 repeat my segment intention so we are on the page 118 jerry abraham let's speak more in terms of segment intention since it would be very tedious to give our attention to every small detail involved in every moment could we not just intend safety, say, the first thing in the morning, and then wouldn't that keep us safe for the rest of the day? Abraham, it is not necessary, necessary that you intend it again and again and again. Our fault. There is a value in reiterating, reiterating, reiterating what is most important to you at any point in time once you have set forth for your intent for safety and you begin feeling safe now you are the, the point of always of tracking safety at any time what you may feel unsafe that is the time again to set forth your reinforcement of safety could the segment intending process hinder my spontaneous reactions jerry could segment intending hinder our spontaneity or our ability to react to your situation in the moment in any way? Abraham, segment intending would hinder your ability to react by default, but it would strengthen your ability to react deliberately. Spontaneity is wonderful as long as you are spontaneously attracting what you want. It is not so wonderful when you are spontaneously attracting that which you do not want. We will not replace deliberate creating with spontaneous creation by default, at any cost. The delicate balance between belief and desires. Jerry, Abraham, would you take a moment here and speak to us about what you have called a delicate balance of creating between wanting and believing? Abraham, the two sides in this in this balance of creation are want it and allow it. You could also say want it and expect it. You could also say think about it and expect it. The best scenario is to desire something and to bring yourself into the belief or expectation of achieving it. That is creation at its best. If you have a slight desire for something and you believe you can achieve it, the balance is complete and it becomes yours. 
if you have a strong desire for something but you don't doubt your ability to achieve it it cannot come at least not right now for you must bring your thought or desire and your thought of of belief into alignment maybe you have been stimulated to a thought of something that you do not desire but because you have often heard reports of this thing happening to others, you believe in the possibility of it. So your slight thought of this unwanted thing and your belief in its possibility make, your, make you a candidate for the achievement of that experience. The more you think of what you want, the more the law of attraction will bring the evidence of it to you until you will believe it. And when you understand the law of attraction, and it's easy to come to know it because it's, it's always consistent. And you begin to deliberately direct your thoughts, your belief in your ability to be, do or have anything will come into place. Have a beautiful day, Gary. When does segment intending lead to work? Jerry. We are physical beings and we are thought to believe that in order to get a financial return, our hard work is important, but you don't mention much about the physical action. How does hard work or physical action fit into your creative equation? Abraham, the more attention you give to an idea through thought, the more the law of attraction responds and the more powerful the thought becomes. By preparing, segment intending, and imagining in your creative workshop, you will then begin to feel inspiration to act. Action that comes from the feeling of inspiration is action that will produce good results. For you, all, for you are allowing the laws of the universe to carry you. If you take action without deliberately preparing, Fall. Often your action feels like hard work because you are attempting to make more happen in this moment than your action alone alone can accomplish. If you will think your creation into being and then follow through with inspired action, you will find your future ready and waiting for you to arrive. And then you can offer your action in order to enjoy the fruit of your true creative power instead of incorrectly trying to use your action to create. Which is the best choice of action? Jerry. So, when there are a lot of different actions that we could be taking in order to accomplish something specific, how can we fin finally decide, in the last moment, which of these different possible actions would be the most effective for us to use? Abraham. By imagining yourself taking the, taking the potential act and then nothing how you feel while you are imagining the, that action. If you have two choices, envision yourself taking one choice and note how you feel about it. And then envision yourself taking the other choice and see how you feel about it. The way you feel about the potential action will not be clear to you. However, unless you have taken the time to first identify your intentions and put them in an order of priority. And once you have done that, then making the decision of what is the most appropriate action will be a very simple process. You will be using your emotional guidance system. How long should I wait for the manifestation? Jerry. Let's say there are those who are waiting for something to manifest right now and they find themselves getting a little discouraged because what they're being intending isn't there yet. How long should they wait before there are any visible signs of success? And what would be some signs that is going to happen? Abraham. As you have set forth your intent to have something and you are looking expectantly for it, it is now on its way to you, and you will begin to see many signs of it. You will see others who have achieved something like it, which will stimulate your wanting. You will take more notice of aspects of it in any many 
of it in many different directions. You will find yourself thinking about it and feeling excited about it often, and you will be feeling very good about that which you want. Those will be some of the signs that what you want is on the way. When you understand that the majority of your creative effort is spent in defining what you want and then aligning your thoughts to that desire, you may then realize that the majority, majority of the creative process is taking place on a vibrational level. Therefore, your creation can be nearly complete, as much as 99% complete, before you see physical evidence of it. That's really good. So if you will remember that the positive emotion you are feeling in anticipation of your creation is also evidence of its progress, then you will be able to move steadily and quickly toward the outcomes you desire. Can I use segment intending to co-create? Jerry, Abraham, how can we use this segment intending process in order to mutually accomplish a goal with another person? Abraham, the better the job you have done in your own segment intending, the more powerful your thoughts will be about your desire. And then your power of influence will be stronger. And so, as you interact with others, it will be easier for them to catch the spirit of your ID. It is also extremely helpful for you to use the segment intending process to evoke the best from others. If you expect them to be unhelpful or unfocused, you will attract that from them, while if you expect them to be brilliant and helpful, you will attract that from them. If you have spent some time bringing your thoughts to a powerful place before your physical meeting, you will have a much more satisfying co-creation for yourself and for them. That is so, so wonderful. Happy, beautiful day. Marionette and Roland will say, I have a listening. Ah, it's so nice to know you too, Roland. Thank you. I have a listening Esther Hex seminar and Espen's questions directly to Aram. It's wonderful to know you, Espen. It's wonderful to know you too. Thank you, Roland. So we are all in this together. We are all beautiful co-creators for ourselves and for each other. And in our own alignment, we are all special and unique in our own way. So each and one of us. So so and so so to go to be good to be here and to read this and, and feel this energy we all creating together. So more to come. This is fun. So, so good. So, how can I convey my intent more precisely? Jerry, I recall throughout the past years that quite often I would go into a situation that I felt was very important, but the other person I would talk back and forth. And then after I left, I would think, gee, I could have said and I should have said and I wanted to say, but I didn't. So instead of feeling a sense of accomplishment when the interaction was over, I often felt a sense of frustration. How could I have avoided that? Abraham, by thinking about your desired outcome before you enter the conversation, you will get a momentum going that will help you more clearly convey your meaning. It is also of value to recognize that in this combining of thoughts, ideas and experiences. Together you have a potential of creating something even greater than you could create on your own. So, preparing your positive expectation of their contribution will put you in a posi position of rendezvousing with their clarity, power and value. In this good feeling alignment, your mind will be clear. You will evoke clarity from the other and Together, you will have a wonderful co-creation. Happy beautiful day, Scott. Jerry, so what if a person doesn't want to upset others or hurt their feelings or anger them when the subject of the interaction might be a 
controversial thing. In other words, if you are interacting with someone who has some conflicting desires, and yet you can see there could be some mutually beneficial goals that could be achieved if a potential controversy could be avoided, how can a situation like that work out for all persons involved? Abraham. By, by intending, as you're moving into the segment, to focus upon those things that you do have in common, to focus upon your points of harmony, to give very little attention to what you are not agreeing upon, and to give your great attention to the things you do agree upon. That is the resolution in all relationships. The trouble with the most relationships is, is that you pick out the one little thing that you do not like and then give that most of your attention. And then, by the law of attraction, you solicit more of what you do not want. Can one have prosperity without working for it? Jerry, you told us many times that we can have it all. Let's take a situation where people want prosperity, but they don't want to go to work or find a job. How would you suggest their bridge that quandary? Quandary, 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 okay, cool. Abraham, by considering the intention separately, if they want prosperity, but it is their belief that prosperity comes only through working, then they will not be able to have prosperity because they do not want to do the only thing that they believe will bring it forth. But as they consider prosperity, singularity, then by not coupling it with the work that they are resisting, they will be able to attract prosperity. You have come upon something very important. It is that what we call conflating intentions or conflating beliefs. The solution is simply a matter of taking your eye of what is conflicting and putting it upon the essence of what you want. If you want prosperity and you believe that it requires hard work and you are willing to offer the hard work, there is no contradiction. There is no contradiction and you will achieve a level of prosperity. If you want prosperity and you believe that it requires hard work and you are averse to hard work, there is a contradiction in your thinking and you will not only have a difficult time offering the action, but any action you offer will know will not be productive. If you want prosperity and you believe that you deserve it and you expect it to come to you just because you want it, want it to, there is no contradiction in your thinking and the pro prosperity will flow. Pay attention to how you are feeling as you are offering your thoughts so you can sort out the contradictory thoughts and as you eliminate the contradictions regarding anything that you desire, it must come to you. The law of attraction must bring it. This is so, so good. So let's see. Okay. okay. When the job offers rain, that, uh, when the jobs offer rain, they pour Jerry, so let's say that there is a poor person who hasn't been able to find a job after months and months of wanting and trying, and then as soon as they do receive a job that they want, four or five other good offers come in all at once, say, in that same week. What would be the cause of that? Abraham, the reason why the job was so long in coming was because Rather than focusing upon what they wanted, which was the job, they were focusing upon the lack of the job, pushing it away. Once they broke through and received a job, then the focus was no longer on the lack of it. The focus was on what was wanted. So now they began receiving more of what had been prepared. In your example, the desire grew stronger, but even though the belief was weak. So in time, the law of attraction yielded that this person was feeling the strongest. They tortured themselves unnecessarily, unnecessarily, 
however, by not taking the time to clean up their thoughts. Hi, Tinika. Beautiful day. So, why are adoptions often followed by pregnancies? Jerry, is that why if a couple who hasn't been able to get pregnant for years adopts a child, then suddenly the wife often becomes pregnant? Abraham, it is the same story indeed. <laughs> it's very funny. So, where does competition fit into their intentions picture? Jerry, another question. How does competition fit into the picture? Abraham, from our perspective, in this vast universe in which we are all creating, there truly is no competition, for there is enough abundance on all subjects to satisfy all of us. You put yourself in a position of competition by saying that there is only one price, and that can bring forth a little discomfort, for you want to win. You do not want to lose. But often the attention is upon losing rather than on winning. When you put yourself in the position of competition, the one who wins is always the one who is clearest about his warning and most expectant of it. It is law. If there is any value in competition, it is this. It stimulates desire. Would strengthening my willpower be an, an advantage? Jerry, is there any way people could strengthen their will so that they could get more of what they want and less of what they don't want? Abraham, utilizing the process of segment intent certainly could accomplish that, but it is not so much a strengthening of, that, of the will as it is thinking false that the law of attraction then adds to. Willpower can mean determination. And determination can all mean deliberately thinking, but all of that sounds like harder work than, than is really required. Simply give thought to what is preferred consistently throughout the day, and the law of attraction will take care of everything else. This is so, so good. So why do most beings stop experiencing growth? Why do most beings stop experiencing growth? Jerry, it seems to me that most people in our society, by the time they reach at the age of 25 to 35, have gone about as far as they're going to go, as far as their development and growth. They have the home they're going to have, the lifestyle they're going to have, the job they're going to have, the beliefs, politics, religious convictions they're going to have and even the variety of personal experiences the most of them are going to have do you have any idea what that cause of that is abraham it is not so much that they have had all of the experience that they are going to have it is that they are no longer attracting new experiences and the new experiences there is excitement and more desire, but many of them are no longer deliberately setting forth their desire. They are more or less resigned to what is. Giving attention to what is only attracts more of what is, while giving attention to what is wanted attracts change. And so, there is a sort of complex, complacency, complacency that comes about simply because the law the laws are not understood. Understood. Most people stop deliberate reaching for expansion because they have not understood the laws of the universe. And so, they have been un unintentionally offering contradictory thoughts, resulting in not getting what they want. When your belief of what you can accomplish contradicts your desire of what you would like to, to accomplish, even hard work does not yield good results, and over time, you just get tired. Coming into conscious awareness of the laws of the universe and then beginning to gently guide your own thoughts to that which you prefer will begin to produce positive results immediately. 
Hmm. Jerry, so let's say that the person had, has reached a particular point in life where they find themselves in what I would call a downward or negative spiral. spiral. How could they use segment intending to start that spiral moving back up again? Abraham, your no, your now is powerful. In fact, all of your power is right here, right now. So if you will focus upon where you are right now and stop to think about what you most want from this segment only, you will find clarity. You cannot right now sort out everything that you want about every subject, but you can right now define what you prefer from here. And, that, and as you do that, segment after segment, you will find a newfound clarity and your downward spiral will turn upward. This is so good, so how much do I have left? Can I read this last one? This is good. Yeah. Yeah, let's move. Let's go for it. This is good. Uh, thank you, Tenegra. Oh, awesome. You were reading beautiful lines of love, expansion, releasing resistance, insights, inspiration, desires, attraction. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your words. Appreciate your alignment. So, you know, kind words. It feels so good reading those uh, words from Abraham. So, let's move on. This is so nice. We have just four pages left. We will read the rest of it. This is good. Uh, so, how do we avoid influence from our old beliefs and habits? Jerry, Abraham, it seems to me to be particularly difficult for most of us to discard our old ideas, beliefs and habits. Would you, would you be willing to give us an affirmation that would assist us in avoiding any influence from our past experiences and beliefs? Abraham. I am powerful in my now. We are not encouraging our discarding of old ideas, for in trying to get rid of them, you, you actually only think about them more. And some of your old ideas are worth keeping. But just be more aware of how you are directing your thoughts and make a decision that you want to feel good. Today, no matter where I am going, no matter what I am doing, it is my dominant intent to see that which I want to see. Nothing is more important than that I feel good. Jerry, so if people are witnessing their negatives being broadcast through the media or even listening to the problems that they might hear presented by their friends, how could they keep that negativity from offsetting them. Abraham, by setting forth the intent in every segment of their life experience to see that which they want to see. And then, even from the most negative presentations, they could see something that they do want. Hmm. Is, it, is it ever okay to state what isn't wanted? Jerry, is it ever okay for us to state the things we don't want? Abraham, stating what you do not want can sometimes bring you to a clear picture of what you do want, but it is good to quickly get out, get off the subject of what you do not want and onto the subject, subject of what you do want. Hmm. Is there any value in researching our negative thoughts? Jerry, Abraham, do you ever see any value in trying to identify the specific thought that may have brought forth some negative emotion? Abraham, there can be value in it for this reason. What is most important when you recognize that you are thinking a negative thought is to, in whatever way you can, stop thinking the negative thought. If there is a belief within you that is very powerful, then you may find that it, this negative thought will come up again and again and again. 
And so you continually have to divert your thought from that negative thought onto something else. In that case, it is of value to recognize the troublesome thought and modify it by applying a new perspective to it. In other words, mold the conflicting belief in two, into one that is not so conflicting, and then it will not keep coming up and hounding you. What about when others don't consider my desires realistic? Jerry, if there's someone who knows what we want to accomplish, and it's something really far beyond the, er the average, and this person tells us that our desires are not realistic, how can we avoid being influenced by that? Abraham, you can avoid others' influence by having given thought, even before your interaction with them, to what is important to you. Segment intending will be of great value here. As others, ins uh, as others insist that you look at reality, they are influencing you to be rooted to this spot like a tree. As long as you are, in, as only as you are seeing only what is, you cannot grow beyond it. You must be allowed to see what you want to see if you will ever attract what you want to see. That is so powerful. Attention to what is only creates more of what is. Hmm. So how how is it possible to have it all in 60 days? So we are on the last pages here now. So this is good. Two pages left. So 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 good. Uh, so how is it possible to have it all in 60 days? Jerry, you're essentially saying that within 60 days, we could have everything be the way we want it to be in our lives. How would you suggest that we go about doing that? Abraham, first, you must recognize that everything that you are now living is the result of the thoughts that have been offered by you in the past. Those thoughts have literally invited or set up the circumstances that you are now living. And so, today, as you begin setting forth your thought of your future and seeing yourself as you want to be, you begin the alignment of those future events and circumstances that will please you. As you give thought to your future, your future that may be 10 years, your future that may be five years, or your future that may be 60 days away, you literally begin preparing. And then, as you move into those prepared moments, and as the future becomes your present, you fine tune it by saying, this is what I now want. And all of those thoughts that you have put forth about your future, right down to this moment, when you are now intending what action you want to take, will all fit together to bring you precisely that which you now want to live. Goosebumps. Oh, this is feels so good. And so it is a simple process of recognizing day by day that there are many segments. And as you are entering into a new segment, you need to stop and identify what is most important to you to, to you so that by the law of attraction, you may attract that unto you for your consideration. The more fun you give to something, the clearer you become. The clearer you become, the more positive emotion you feel and the more power you attract. And so, this business of segment intending is the key to swift and deliberate creation. We have enjoyed interacting with you very much on this most important subject. There is great love here for you. Now, you understand. Now that you understand the rules, so to speak, of this marvelous game of eternal life that you are playing, 
you are now destined destined to have a wonderful experience for now you are in creative control of your own physical experience now that you understand the powerful law of attraction you will no longer misunderstand how it is that brings up that well, let's read it again this is good now that you understand the powerful law of attraction you will no longer misunderstand how it is that things are happening to you or to any other you may be observing and as you practice and become proficient at directing your own thoughts toward those things that you desire your understanding of the science of deliberate creation will take you anywhere you decide to go segment by segment you will prepare your life experience sending powerful thoughts into your future to make it ready for your joyful arrival and by paying attention to the way you feel you will learn to guide your thoughts into alignment with your inner being and who you really are as you become the allower you were born to be destiny to be to a life of fulfillment and never-ending joy we have enjoyed this interaction immensely immensely and for now we are complete amen so that's it that was the whole book we finished and wow what an amazing journey and uh more to come so it never stops it's just moving forward to more and more and more and more so love you guys so so much thanks for all comments thanks for everything you share and thanks for being you shining brighting unique special you and uh, yes you tomorrow namaste have a nice day <laughs>